Welcome to Afcast Tenerife Afternoons. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. On today's podcast, I'll actually be interviewing myself again because I didn't get anybody this week. I was organising something with tourists, but there was no parking where I wanted to go and there wasn't that many tourists around. So I decided today to tell you how we got here. Also on today's podcast... Christine will be making a guest appearance again with SSDD. And of course, there's the weather and the COVID-19 update. Enjoy the show. But first, we do the weather for the week ending July the 5th, 2020. It's been quite clear all week and the temperature's been in the mid to upper 20s in the shade and way over 30 in the sun. There was a bit of a wind on Wednesday, Thursday. This is the precursor to the Kalima, which isn't really a Kalima, it's more like a Sirocco. A wind coming up from the south, from Africa. That's going to bring us some hot weather. Maybe Wednesday, Thursday next week. But this is an aftcast, not a forecast. We ate every meal outside on the deck. It's been lovely, and if you're coming in, don't forget to get that 50 factor, because the UV is pretty high. If you're on the coast, there'll be a nice onshore breeze, and that's going to make you burn more. So just be very careful. These weather afcasts are going to be good for next year, when you can look back at any week and see what the weather was like. COVID-19 update. The good news is we're down to teens in Tenerife, and we haven't had a new active case in the last 14 days. Nothing's changed with the rules. You still have to carry a mask with you at all times, but you only need to wear it when you're entering a shop or going on public transport, or if you're going to the doctor's surgery or somewhere enclosed where you can't keep a one metre 50 distance. If you're in a bar or a restaurant, eating and drinking, you don't need to wear your mask. Also, you don't need to wear your mask walking along the promenade or sitting on the beach. The COVID section is going to be very short today. Don't forget, if you're coming over, make sure that you haven't put yourself in any danger or any risky situations in the last 14 days before you board the plane. You don't want to be the one that brings COVID-19 back to the island, do you? Coming up, I'll be talking to myself. But first, here's Christina. Ladies and gentlemen, Christina's same shit, different day. She did a great one. She was pouring her heart out, telling us all about her job she had in a wonderful music shop in Regensburg. And I realised that I hadn't pressed the record button. And I do apologise. And I'm making her do it again, even though she doesn't really want to. So you may forgive her that it's a bit shorter than it was earlier when only I was listening. So this is Christina. How are you? SSCD. So, you were telling me about where you were working, and it was really, really interesting, and I forgot to record it. Okay. When I was 16 and done with school, I started working in the Regensburg in a music shop. Thing was, in those days, 40 years ago, it was really hard to get a job. And some of my classmates wrote 30 applications for jobs. I got a call from my aunt one day, and she said there's a nose on the paper that this music shop in Ingsburg is looking for apprentices. Went there, talked to the boss. He didn't want to even see my papers, just so yeah, you can start 1st of September. And that was 1st of September 40 years ago? Ah, uh, that's right. So what type of music shop was it? Was it records or what was it? No, it was musical instruments and guitars, violins, cellos, trumpets, saxophones, pianos, grand pianos, flutes, um... What's the schlagzeug? Drums. Drums, yeah. Everything. So it was nice to talk to the clients. They were really interesting people. People from the theatre in Ringsburg. 
and people who play the rock music and yeah, we had our favorite clients. So did you meet anybody famous? No. No famous clients that came to your shop? No. But I've seen a picture of you in Munich somewhere with somebody famous. Yeah, I met, I met Stevie Ray Vaughan in Munich. The real Stevie Ray Vaughan. Unfortunately, he died already. But you met him before he died? Yeah, of course. Now we got pictures. I'll see if I can dig him out. Have we still got them? Yeah. We'll see if we can dig him out and uh, I'll put them in the, uh, on the YouTube version. Yeah, met him just before the, we went to his concert. Uh, he was really nice. Where'd he been? He was on the way to the Oktoberfest. Not on the way back from the Oktoberfest? Oh, he was still was sober. I met him and after the Oktoberfest he had his a concert to play, so he might not have been drunk. What's that interesting? The music shop, does it exist anymore? No, nobody plays music anymore. They all play computer music. So next week's your birthday on Wednesday, and uh, are you planning anything special? Not really, no. Maybe we go out, out for a nice meal, and it's hard to buy stuff at the moment. I got some money from Tim. I will buy a sombrero sunglasses and what's the other thing I wanted to buy? Forgot. Uh, a memory cube. No, definitely not. Well, that was SSDD for this week. Thank you, Christina. Yeah. And we'll talk to you next week. Okie dokie. I think she did very well for somebody who's had to do it three times. I'm going to be talking to myself soon. But before that, we'd like to thank all our sponsors and everyone who's supported us over the past few weeks. It's been really an eye-opener of how good you guys are. If you want to support us or just buy us a coffee, you can do so by going to www.timothydow.com and pressing the sponsor button. Or as always, you could now fly over and join us in person. And without further delay, I'm not taking you back anywhere this week. This is live. I'm talking to a very famous person, a personality of stage and screen, a legend in his own lunchtime, Timothy Dow. Timothy, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'd just like to ask you a few questions. We're not going to do this sort of like fake interview thing again, are we? Well, I was thinking of doing it like that. Don't you want to do that? Well, not really, no, because people just don't believe it. Yeah, but I could ask you really in-depth questions and you could give really pithy answers. That's not going to happen, is it? OK, just tell your story. So this is how we got here the long way round. After Christina and I met and got married, we had a little girl called Stephanie, and we were working, or I was working, in Regensburg in a company called Siemens, and I was doing a little bit of software development. It was right at the beginning of a thing called the Semiconductor Equipment Communication Standard, or SECS, or we used to call it SEX. And because I was one of the first people to start working with this technology, I very soon became a sort of an expert. So when I met this guy in southern Austria, who'd just come back from Singapore and was being offered a managerial post in a brand new factory in the United States, he asked me if I wanted to join him. So I packed up Christina and Stephanie and we toddled off to Richmond, Virginia. We actually got a place uh, in Glen Allen, which is just outside Richmond, on the 295, sort of northwest, on the way to Mannequin. All the counties there were named after cigars, or basically the cigars were probably named after the counties, to tell you the truth. Places like Chesterfield. So it's totally Marlborough country, but not the cowboy Marlborough country, the actual place where they made them. We were staying in a motel and we're looking for a place to, to live. And we'd seen a few places online, but we weren't too sure. And a lot of the other people that were going over there were getting met by real estate agents and they were buying property. 
but we didn't think that we were property owners because we'd never owned before. So we were looking for a place to rent. So there was one school that they were recommending because they were going to start doing sort of Germans in the morning and English in the afternoon, even for the local kids. So the local kids would get a German immersion in the morning and the German kids would get an English immersion in the afternoon. So we went and had a look at that school and two doors away from the school, basically backing onto the school grounds, we saw a, a sign, house for rent. So we called the number, met the guy, and rented 10729 Shady Ford Lane, Glen Allen, Virginia, 23060. The funny thing was the rent was 1200 a month, and then eventually I made an offer on the house to buy it because the mortgage was only 800 a month. That's another story. This defined us as a family that moved around. So after the contract had finished, we decided we wanted to go back to Germany for a while. And I had to fly over and rent a house on a weekend alone. And I rented the totally wrong house. It was way too big. And I saw it on a Sunday. And unfortunately, when we got there, it was right next to the motorway, the Autobahn. So on Sunday, it was pretty quiet. But the rest of the week, there was traffic passing every two seconds, including all through the night. It was in a place in Munich called Sudpark, Sudpark Ali, and we didn't like that at all. And that's where Christina started showing signs of MS. I think it was the stress of moving, plus she didn't like the place that I'd rented. And we were coming back from her parents one weekend, one Sunday night, and her eyes just crossed, and that was the beginning of something we knew, which was going to define us for the next few years. But we'd already put a deposit down on a house up in Regensburg, where we used to live, or just outside, a place called Ilbach, which was nestled between two sort of forest areas, just on, on the beginning of the Bavarian forest, going towards the Czech border. So it was like five minutes outside the town centre, or the city centre of Regensburg, but when you sat there, you just, you, you could be right in the middle of the forest somewhere. And we were quite happy there. I was still working for Siemens, or that had changed to Infineon by then. And because it was an international company, they were sending me all over the place. So I was working in Austria and Portugal, Singapore, Malaysia. So we even opened a new place in China, in a place called Suchow. And as Christina got worse, I could spend less and less time traveling. So the job even became boring. We had a wonderful house there. It was like three stories tall. Well, I say three stories. It was probably four stories. There was a built-out cellar so it was like a wash cellar and a hobby cellar and then the heating cellar but it was all tiled so you could actually live down there in the summer when it got too hot which you sometimes did because in Bavaria it was just north of the Danube it could get way up in the high 30s in the summer and in the winter way down to the minus 20s so averaging around about minus 6 minus 7 but uh, we've even had it minus 40 <laughs> where, where the Danube froze and you could walk across it. So as Christina's mobility got a little bit worse, she was realising that in the summer she was totally knackered with the heat and had to spend the whole day in the cellar. And in the winter she couldn't get out of the house for three months of the year. So of the six to eight weeks of summer where you could sit outside in the evening, we were sat out on our deck underneath a little pergola and I asked Chris... What do you want from life? Stephanie had just started college. She wasn't that far away, but she'd moved out. And she said, I want to sleep late. I want to have breakfast, looking out at the sea. Fresh fruit, fresh croissant. And just sit there until around about lunchtime. Then I'd like to lie in my chair, listen to an audio book or two, maybe call my parents or my sister. Sister is what I say. And friends and family back in Germany. But to have a nice place where people could come and visit us. That was summer 2011. So in March the following year, 2012, we came to Tenerife for the first time. We stayed at uh, the Sheraton in La Caleta, beautiful five-star hotel. The people were wonderful, the staff were great. The area was really good. It was right at the beginning of the new maritime walkway that went past through Del Duc and Fania Bay, Torbiscas, all the way down to Los Cristianos at the end. It had everything you needed, including a little sports bar around the corner where you could get a burger or a steak for half the price in the Five Star Hotel. But the Five Star Hotel had the best breakfast. In fact, if you went in at 10 o'clock and ate through till 12, you could call that lunch as well. 
They had an adapted room as well, so that was good. And there was lifts everywhere, very wheelchair friendly. In fact, one of the pools had a lift, which is quite funny because uh, the first time they dropped her in it, they didn't realize that she couldn't swim. So they just dropped her down and I couldn't even stand. So she was clinging onto me and I was nearly drowning and the uh, socoristas, the pool attendants were just laughing their heads off because they thought I was joking around. Anyway, eventually we got out and we said, well, okay, that's it. <laughs> we'll only go in the pool, the paddling pool from now on. They did have a paddling pool actually, um, right in the big pool area. It's like a slow slope into a seawater pool. So that's quite good. So as we were sat there, sipping on our brandy in the evening, I thought, wouldn't it be nice to, to live here? So that's when we decided we're going to sell everything up and eventually come out to Tenerife. So summer of 2012, we sort of decided that that's what we're going to do when we retire. So 2012, I was about 52. So that meant there was another 15 years before we could retire. And Christina was saying, well, in 15 years, I don't know how good I'm going to be. So I realised that we've either got to do it now or never. So we worked out how much money we could actually get together and how much money we'd actually need to live on Tenerife. And it works out, it's not that much, as long as you don't think you're on holiday all the time. So I talked to work and they agreed that things were getting too much, looking after Christina, not being able to travel and they were paying me quite a lot of money, so it was cheaper for them to get rid of me with a thank you than it was to keep me till I'm 65. And when we sold the house, we should have had enough money to last us until I was 60. But unfortunately, the bank did a number on us and charged us the missing interest for paying off the loan early. So we had to pay them 25 grand. But in the end, we realized that as long as we paced ourselves and we didn't go stupid, and I was working as a magician at the beginning in the hotels and that kept our head above water. So the moral of the story really is find out what you really want out of life and don't wait till you retire. If you're young enough, plan to retire as early as possible and do something you love and maybe make money at it. The world of work's changing as we know this year. So working for the man night and day is probably not going to be an option for our kids and grandchildren. But on the positive note, when you do come over, if you're not planning to buy, that is, a rental, long-term rental, is quite reasonable as long as you have an income. Now, for those of you who are working age and you want to come over and start working here, that'll be hard because unless you have a, a skill which is in demand, then you're probably not going to find a standard job so you have to be something exceptional or go self-employed but if you're thinking of early retiring then you've got to work out how much you can actually realize right now selling all your assets and then rent so we take the bull by the horns living day to day very simple life sleep when you're tired eat when you're hungry it's getting late now 5 to 11 I'm gonna watch a bit of TV and then I'm gonna cut this together and publish it Aftercast Tenerife Afternoons podcast. Vamos a la playa. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And you can get in touch with us by going to www.timothydowd.com to the contact page. You can read all about this in the blog. And if you'd like to sponsor us, just press the sponsor button. We're active on Facebook, Living with MS Tenerife, that's at LWMST, and of course on YouTube, youtube.com slash LWMST. I post a picture almost every night on Instagram, that goes out to Facebook and Twitter. Instagram is Living with MS Tenerife. As always, thank you for listening. Next week I have a real interview again. Just in case it doesn't work out, I won't tell you who it is, but he's an estate agent here on the island. 
and that'd be quite interesting. So until then, it's Tim Dowd for Afghanistan Reef Afternoons podcast, saying goodnight. Bye.